Welcome to the brush guide for Attack of the Liners for Photoshop and Procreate. I'm Tony from Greenway Media and I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what's included in the pack, the different types of brushes and how to get the best out of them, including tips on how you can even customize them. I wanted to keep this overview guide short and sweet while covering both Photoshop and Procreate, but we do also have a separate full process video made using only the Attack of the Liners pack that I'll link to below. It's well worth checking out as it covers some really useful illustration techniques in detail, not to mention some pen, pencil, tablet setup suggestions and it also shows the full illustration process start to finish involved in using these exact same techniques. So onto the brush guide. It's probably worth mentioning our canvas setup. Usually we work at around three or 4,000 pixels on the shorter side. For resolution, if our work is mainly going to appear on screens or digitally, we use 72 DPI, but if we know we're gonna be printing large posters, we want everything to look razor sharp, we'll use 300 DPI. In Photoshop, hit Ctrl or Command N to create a new document, enter the dimensions and the resolution you'd like. In Procreate, from the gallery screen, tap the plus icon top right and either select a preset or add your own custom one by hitting the dark icon with the plus beside the new canvas. From here, you can enter whichever settings you like. If you'd like nice smooth strokes, you can easily get a helping hand in both apps. In Photoshop, select the brush you'd like to use. At the top of the screen, there is a smoothing slider. Simply increase this for more smoothing, which will help you out on longer strokes. You can change the setting at any time. Just remember, any changes you make will be lost whenever you switch brushes in Photoshop. On iPad, tap on the brush you'd like to use to open the brush studio. Tap the stabilization tab on the left and you can increase the stabilization amount slider. Procreate is a little different in that it remembers your last settings. So if you ever want to reset the brush back to its original settings, just open the brush studio again, tap about this brush on the left and tap on reset brush and confirm. Don't ever worry about experimenting in either wrap. You can't break anything and can always revert back to the factory settings. So onto the brushes. Let's kick off with the Skechers and the Razors. There's three Skechers sketch up and running, which have a slightly different flavor to each of them, uh, ranging from hard to soft and almost like a coloring pencil. Uh, I can't stress how important the erasers are in our workflow. Uh, they can really make or break an illustration. So there's nothing worse than having a nice dynamic ink line erased with a, de a default hard round brush. In short, these erasers will allow you to retain the original feel of whichever line, wash, pattern fill, or whatever you drew when cleaning up mistakes. Or you can even use them creatively to subtract from artwork. So experiment, find out what works for you. The liners are the stars at the back. So many different characters and flow to choose from, ranging from super responsive inkers to precise but natural looking monoliners, as well as some interesting and slightly wilder brushes that you mightn't use every day, but they're great to have when the time comes. One tip I'll give that applies to any of the non-monoliner tech pen types. Sometimes you can get a lot more control by making the brush size larger than you might think. With a soft stroke, you can still get the exact same thin lines, but now when you press harder, you can get nice thick lines in the same stroke without ever changing brush size. Again, check out the full process video I've linked below for more tips on setting up your pen and tablet to make your line work uh, even better. There's a lot of different characters in the main liners. Mix and match and you'll find some really powerful combos. The outliners can be a lot of fun to use and can be very nice for graffiti style lettering or doodle illustration. If you draw with a single stroke and it overlaps itself, it'll knock out parts of the line that it's overlapping with, which can create some really interesting stuff that would otherwise be very, very difficult to achieve. You might need to retrace part of a stroke to make a branching path, but the lines should readjust nicely. There are three calligraphic brushes with preset angles, uh, which can be nice for certain illustration styles or lettering. In Photoshop, you can actually edit the angle to whatever suits you. Uh, with the brush selected, open your brush settings window and under the brush tip shape, change the angle to whatever you would like. The other liners are a mixture of different styles and effects. The Dotty D brushes are fantastic for a stippled look. Different pressure gets different results. And one of the best things is you can use them in conjunction with some of our filled pattern stipples uh, that's covered later for extra control. Um, because we handmade and drew all the brushes, tips, textures, etc. ourselves using our own brushes, they all play very nicely together and look cohesive. And so absolutely try to mix and match and find out the combos that you love yourself. The stabby brushes are really useful. You don't need to rely on perfect pressure control to get your strokes to taper. They automatically do this. So use different length brushes and styles to really nail your look. 
The shaders are a great collection to colour or shade or add interesting textures to your artwork. The opaque blocker is just a basic brush for your flat shading and has just a hint of grit on the edges. The airbrush can be a quick way to add some quick texture or colour gradients. And I personally love the markers for colouring and shading. Just like the real thing, they build up as you go over them a few times, so it's simple to create something that looks unique and hand-drawn every time you use them. Other brushes in the shaders section are great for adding dirt or grit to your artwork. Just a little bit of texture and my personal favourite is Wonder Wash which has a gorgeous build up that in particular works wonders for background colours and washes. With the fill patterns the brush size changes the area covered by the brush, not the size of the pattern. So we've included a lovely collection of pattern fills like half tones, angle lines, shading, hatching stipples and more. Uh, one really nice feature of the stipples, line fills, uh, half tones is that all the different weights will overlap perfectly on top of each other which means that you can create some really interesting transitions between them all. Same goes for the stipple brushes, the different densities of dots, they all match up nicely. I highly recommend you experimenting with mixing and matching the fill pattern brushes as you can achieve some very unique and interesting effects. Of course, you may wish to change the size of the patterns. Uh, to do this in Photoshop, select the brush, open the brush settings panel, and under texture, you can change the scale size to increase or decrease this. In Procreate, tap the brush to open the brush studio, and under grain, you can also change the scale here as well. You should definitely experiment, and remember, you can always reset the brush to its original settings under the About This Brush tab at the bottom. Stamps and particles can be a lot of fun and they let you put together some lovely artwork very quickly. Uh, so we've saved you a lot of time and we've hand drawn dozens of different stamps for you to use. Uh, because we do them with the liner brushes in the back, they all look like they belong together. For nearly all of these, there are two versions, a stroke and a stamp version. The stroke lets you draw a single line and randomized versions of the stamp will appear. The stamp gives you more control. You just tap or stamp and just one will appear. This will still have a little bit of randomness to it though, so the angle and the size will change just a little bit every time, so uh, it has enough of variation to still look like it's hand drawn. Some of the brushes, like these splats, have a build-up property too. If you tap and hold the brush on the canvas, uh, it will layer more and more of the stamps on top of each other, which will give you basically entirely new uh, original stamps. In Photoshop, if you'd like to space out the stroke particles, select the brush, open your brush settings panel, and under the brush tip shape, change the spacing property to spread them out. You can easily do this in Procreate as well. Just tap on the brush to open the brush studio and change the space slider. You can also reduce the jitter here to make the particles less chaotic. One thing that can be a massive time saver is to have your colour palettes already in place before you even start illustrating. So we've made this really simple, put together 12 really nice colour palettes that all play together nicely. So very easy to install. In Photoshop, go to Window, open your swatches panel, and then on the menu on top right, click on that and go down to Import. Browse to wherever you have the swatches saved for Photoshop, that's the .aco file, and they'll all appear within the window now. In Procreate, tap on the colour swatch, on bottom right press palettes and then the plus icon top right and new from file and you're able to browse to wherever you saved all of the individual palettes and import them one by one. Texture overlays are a really nice way to very simply give your artwork a finishing touch. Uh, so we've included a free pack of 12 texture overlays and they're very simple to use and they work the same in both Procreate and Photoshop. In Photoshop, go to File, Place Linked or Place Embedded, browse wherever you've saved our nice textures, drag to resize it to cover the area you want to, hit Return, and then all you have to do is change the layer blend mode to Multiply and it should look nice. You can drop the opacity a little bit if you want to make the effect a little bit more subtle. So it's so quick and easy to do this that it's worth experimenting with a couple of different textures. The process is very similar in Procreate. Go to the Actions menu, and insert a file, browse to where you have the texture saved. Once it's imported, drag it to resize to cover the area you want it to. And then when you're done, you can go into the Layers panel, and if you tap on the little N icon, that'll give you the layer blend mode, set it to multiply, and again, you can go back in there, drop the opacity a little bit to make the effect more subtle. Nice and easy.